was Henry Rosley. Henry Rosley was the son of Henry, second Earl of Southampton, and Mary Brown. At eight years old, Henry lost his father, and he moved to Cecil House, and Lord Bagley became his guardian. Later, Henry entered Cambridge College, and soon became a renowned, brilliant student. When he graduated, he entered Gray's Inn Legal Society in London. At the time, Henry turned 17 years old, and Lord Bagley, who always kept an eye on the young Earl's affairs, tried to arrange a marriage between Henry and Elizabeth Stanley, Countess of Derby. But Henry showed no great interest in her. More importantly, he didn't want to get married. So despite Cecil attempts to try to convince Harry to get married and to find a suitable wife, after four years at 21 years old, Harry definitely refused Cecil's offer and was forced to pay a large sum of money. He preferred to be broke than to get married. At that moment, Harry's relationship with Cecil turned sour. Harry slowly detached from him, while Bargley didn't lie Harry's free spirit. He welcomed Harry in his house since he was a little boy, and as a proud uncle, he wanted the best for him, a woman of his age, a blue blood, with whom rise a family. But Harry was a maverick spirit. He was outgoing, ebullient, had many friends, a castle on his own at Tichfield to throw the best parties. He wanted to live his life, have fun, make mistakes, falling in love with someone he truly loved. Moreover, Harry didn't want to put aside his passions. He had a huge love for theatre, and for this reason he quickly became the most important London patron for dramatists and poets. It was right in those years that Harry met a quaint, bizarre, 14 years old writer with whom he began a successful and fruitful collaboration. That writer was John Florio. But how we know that Florio entered the patronage of Henry? When Florio published A World of Words in 1598, he dedicated to Henry, and in the dedication he wrote to be in his pay and patronage. Florio doesn't write when he began working with him. He only mentions to have been in his house for some years. Florio loved to be elusive and ambiguous when he wrote, but we can guess when his friendship with Henry began. 1591. In Second Fruits, Florio's work published in 1591, there are some mentions of Henry. Florio loved to write about his life in his works. There are many mentions of his friends, his colleagues, his inner circle in his works. This is the case of Second Fruits, in which there are two dialogues in which Florio mentions Harry, the life that Florio was living with Harry in those years, a dandish bohemian lifestyle spent with London socialite. In a dialogue, Florio and Harry play a tennis together, Harry's favorite sport and a common hobby among the aristocracy. In another dialogue, Florio and Harry have a dinner together, and John suggests Harry to go to see a play at theatre afterward. This dialogue showed that Florio was not just Henry's tutor, he was spending a great amount of time with him, and mostly has an intimate friend and has a confidant. Moreover, Henry was very keen on Italian studies, and Florio was the perfect choice to surround his patron with the best Italian authors and the best Italian theatre. As I have explained in my past videos, when Florio worked for someone, 
he turned into a real factotum. With Henry, he became his tutor in Italian language and Italian studies, his secretary, writing letters for him in the famous secretary hand he already used at the French embassy and getting involved in the Earl's private affairs. So Florian was already well acquainted with Harry in 1591 and they will live together at least until 1598. With a word of words we have the proof that Florian was under Harry's patronage. I'm saying this because actually many writers wrote dedication to the young Earl, but this doesn't mean that they were in his pay and patronage, like Florio. For instance, many obsequious writers love to prize the Earl, writing him dedications and asking to get into his patronage. However, not everyone succeed. John Clapham wrote a poem to Harry in Latin, Narcissus, recounted the Greek legend of a beautiful young man who perished through self-love, probably a hint at Harry's lifestyle. Thomas Nash, Florio's greatest enemy, tried to woo the Earl, writing him several dedications, but he failed. Thomas Nash dedicated The Unfortunate Traveller and the Choice of Valentines to Harry. However, Nash's dedication were not phony at all, instead they were a mockery. For example, in 1591, when Thomas Nash published The Unfortunate Traveller, he wrote to Harry that he was a dear lover and cherisher, as well of the lovers of poets as of poets themselves. Nash basically wrote that Henry had love affairs with his writers. When Henry saw the dedication, he was deeply displeased and decided to refuse his offer. Now, Nash was Florio's greatest enemy and in 1591 Florio was already living with Henry at Titchfield, enjoying his patronage and living a lavish, courtly life. With that dedication, Nash didn't want to prize the Earl, he wanted to embarrass him. His words on loving poets, as well as their lovers, point to scandal, not eulogy. One of the reasons why he did that was that in Harry's house there was his greatest enemy, John Florio. The patronage that Florio got and Nash didn't was one of the many reasons Florio and Nash couldn't stand each other and their works contain proof of this ongoing battle between them. After the unfortunate traveller, Thomas Nash wrote another dedication to Harry in the choice of Valentines, but Harry banished him. At that point, when Nash knew he had failed obtaining Harry's patronage, he wrote these words. Among the sacred number of his writers, I dare not ascribe myself, though now and then I speak English. Nash particularly disliked the Italian taste that Harry relished and Florio cultivated. It was obvious that Nash despised Florio not simply because he was a successful writer in the circle of Henry Rosley, but also because he spread Italian culture through Henry and his love for literature and theatre. Nash saw Florio as a dangerous foreign and a dangerous social climber. And Florio's words in the second fruits, they have a knife a command to cut my throat because an Englishman in Italian is a devil incarnate, perfectly shows the danger he was facing for having successfully obtained an important job with the best London patron. So in 1591, John Florio entered the patronage of Henry Rosalie and he began a successful career not just as a writer but also as a ghost writer. Despite having received many harsh criticism and attacks, even death threats from his enemies, Florio enjoyed several happy years at Titchfield and thanks to Henry's generous patronage, he worked safely, happily at the centre of London's most interesting literary circle.
In the next video, I will explain you what it meant for Florio to enter the patronage of Henry Rosley, his role as ghost writer, and how his enemy reacted. I will also recount how Florio got involved in Henry's private affairs. Specifically, there are documents that prove that in 1594, Florio was involved in the Danvers Long Feud, which resulted in the murder of Henry Long. I hope that you liked the first part of a series of videos that I'll make on John Florio and the Earl of Southampton. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Stay resolute. Bye!